Okay, today we're talking about space, the element of art space. Space is the area around, inside, or between shapes and forms. We're going to be trying to create the illusion of space on a flat piece of paper by creating a background and a foreground and a middle ground. Other ways that you create this illusion is by overlapping objects, by making colors fade and get duller as they get farther away, by making things look bigger as they're closer to the viewer, and by placing objects higher on the picture plane when they're farther away. Another method to create the illusion of space is by using perspective. One point perspective is when you have one point on this horizon line and it looks like everything meets or disappears on this point. You could see it here in this hallway. It looks like everything disappears on that one point. And that's what we're going to be doing in our aquarium drawing. You can see how it looks like everything disappears back in the background at that one point. This is called one point perspective. You also notice the overlapping and that things get smaller as they get farther away and have less details. What we're going to need for this, what I'm going to use for this is um, some good thick paper. I'm going to use a pencil to draw with. I'm going to use one of the black Sharpies like the ones I gave you. I'm going to use some colored pencils like the ones I gave you. Um, and I'm going to use some watercolor paint like the ones I gave you and some tissue um, to clean our paint brushes with and a paintbrush. So if you don't have these materials, you could substitute um, with crayons to add color or you could just do it in pencil. I'm also going to have a ruler. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a horizon line. I'm not going to draw my horizon line real dark because I'm going to end up erasing it. And on the horizon line, I'm going to put a vanishing point. This is where all of our lines are going to disappear to. Now I'm going to have my floor coming way out. This is going to be my hallway floor. So I'm putting it all the way out on the side and all the way out on this side. And we're gonna put tiles on this floor. And we want our tiles to be even. So I'm using my ruler so I can make sure that my tiles are all the same size. Miss Stacy's gonna take her ruler here and I'm gonna make each tile like two inches wide. So I'm gonna mark this every two inches. That's where my tiles are gonna be. All right, so now I'm gonna put my ruler here on where I marked on two inches and the other end of my ruler on that vanishing point. See, right there, right here. And I'm just gonna draw a line. And then I'm gonna do it again. Put my ruler there. Double check and make sure it's still on the vanishing point. Hold it tight, and do it here. This one should be kind of right in the middle. These lines I could draw darker because I'm not erasing them. And there. Now see how it looks like all of those lines just disappear at that vanishing point. Now I'm going to draw some horizontal lines here, but as I get farther back, I want my lines to be closer together. So I'm not going to measure them, I'm going to kind of eyeball them. I'm going to start my first one here. They're going to be big tiles because they're far away from the vanishing point. So I'm going to put them big. I do want to eyeball it, make sure it's about the same on each side. Now the next one, I want them to be a little smaller than this. Not a whole lot smaller, but a little smaller. So I'm going to put it a little closer together. And 
And then this one, I want it to be a little smaller than this one. So a little bit closer together. And then this one a little bit closer to get each time just a little bit closer together all right and there we have that now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a ceiling up here on the top. So we're gonna also, same as we did down here, we're just gonna have it coming off the edge a little and pointing to the vanishing point. We wanna make sure we put our ruler about the same place over on this side so we did on that side and that it touches the vanishing point. All right, now on this particular project, we're through with this horizon line now and we could go back and erase it. If you were doing a landscape, you wouldn't erase your horizon line, you would leave it. But for this one, we're through with it. Okay, now we're gonna do the walls of our aquarium. Miss Stacy started it and messed up a little bit, so I had to erase it. You could see the ghost of my lines, that's why, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna use our pencil and our ruler and draw us a straight line on this side from the ceiling line to the floor line. And then you're gonna to try to do it in the same distance over here from the edge of your page. And we only want about five lines. And we want them to get closer together as they get farther back. So I'm gonna look at this and decide where to put my next line. Um, and you want it to be straight. And I'm gonna put my second one about right here. Okay, now your next line, you don't want it to be that far apart. You want it to be a little bit closer. But again, they're all gonna be parallel to one another. They're all gonna be straight vertical. The next one, you want it to be a little closer than, than this one. each time just a little closer. All right, maybe one more. Now for the top of the ceiling up here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna arch this and bring these two lines together like an archway. And you can see here Miss Stacy wasn't perfect on that. I'm gonna go back and try to fix that. Okay, so we are arching them together You might do this a little softly till you get it right. 
drawing that curvy line, we don't have a ruler. And we might have to erase till we get it the way we want it. We're gonna come back over these lines with the Sharpie in a little bit so it's all good. Now, you notice there, I went off of the page and that's fine and dandy. It's all good. This one's gonna go off the page too. But now we have our walls that get smaller, our ceiling that gets smaller, our floor that gets smaller. Now it's time to add some fish to the aquarium. Now, you can draw your fish from memory, or if you need to, um, pull out some photographs if you've gone to an aquarium and you've taken pictures, that's cool. You may even need to look on Google and find some images of fish. That's okay because you're not just copying from Google, you're using that as a tool to help you do your uh, drawings better. And you're changing it, so you're not um, just copying it directly. Now remember that your fish from above, the fish up here, you're gonna be seeing from below them like you're a worm on the ground. So try to imagine what, I'm gonna try to draw a shark here, uh, what the bottom of the shark would look like. Now, the fish that you draw far away from this vanishing point are gonna be larger than the fish that you draw close to the vanishing point. If you draw a fish back here, it's gonna to need to be smaller. So, I don't know, just try to think of what a fish would look like from below. We're going to come back and add details and colors. Right now I'm drawing what's called the contour lines. And this is going to be like the belly of a fish. And then just start adding you some fish, octopus, anything like that that you want to add swimming around in here. You could even put you a little scuba diver or something, some treasure chest. Okay, this fish is gonna be from the side, so I'm gonna draw a shark over here. Okay, let's speed this up. You'll see that I'm just adding fish as I go, and the smaller fish will be closer to the vanishing point. And as they get farther away, I'll make them larger. Now I'm adding some seaweed and, and plant life in the aquarium, some rocks. And again, as they get closer to the viewer, Far away from the vanishing point, they're going to be bigger and they're going to have more details. More fish at the top. And you just add as many fish as, as you want. You don't have to add as many as Miss Stacy does. You could add more. Add your own fish. I decided to put a little turtle in mine too, a little starfish. Just put whatever you want in your aquarium. You could even put, oh, here I decided to make my shark bigger. I didn't think he was big enough to be that, a shark, because a shark is bigger than other fish. Um, what I was saying is you could even put people walking down the corridor if you wanted to. Just make sure that you make them bigger as they get farther away from that vanishing point. Now I'm using my color pencil to add color, and you'll notice that I'm shading with it. Um, I decided my light was gonna be coming from the bottom of the aquarium, so I kind of shaded my core shadows at the top. 
And what I like to do is if I put something orange on one side, I like to put it on the other side too to balance it out. If I put red on one side, I need to put some red on the other side too. A green octopus on one side means a green turtle on the other side to bring that green over. And it also helped to bring the green that I'm going to put in the seaweed up to the top. That's just one way to balance out your colors and balance out your composition so that everything comes together. You'll notice I put um, um, a medium green to start with and now I'm coming back with a darker green to add some shadows. And I'm going to come back with a yellow in a minute in just a second actually um, closer up to add some highlights and make it bright close up. In the background I don't need all the yellow but here where it's closer to the viewer I want those colors to be bright and vibrant so I'm gonna put some yellow in there. Just finishing up my fish. Make sure to take your time and do a little shading. Remember we talked about the importance of the value, the highlights, and the, the darks. I'm using this little black color pencil now to add a little bit more detail in all of my fish. And now some brown for the rocks and a darker brown for shading. I want those rocks up front to have um, some details where they overlap one another and everything but as I get farther away it's just like a little brown color you could barely even tell it's there now let's just finish up these fish purple on one side purple on the other little dark maroon in the back to help balance out with the red there. I had all that gray on the other side. I needed a gray fish on that side too. Now we're ready to add our watercolor paints. If you if you try to get your paint it's dry you just have to add water to them. So take your water, your paintbrush, and put it in the water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wash out my brush and I'm going to wet this whole section here with water. While it's still wet, I'm going to get my wet paint and we're going to just let it flow into there. Look how the water takes it. This is called wet on wet technique. It's a watercolor technique. starts to dry you could add a little more water
I like about that. So you don't have to be real careful about that grass. A, watercolor paint is transparent. You can see through it. And B, the green grass has blue in it. So Now, as you get farther back, this uh, paint is not going to be as vibrant. So we want it to be bright up here. I'm going to add a little more blue up here. The farther away from that vanishing point, the brighter our colors are going to be. So I'm going to add some more blue up here, make it really vibrant. And that's going to make it look like it's popping off of the page up here. It's coming closer to the viewer. Now we've got this side done. I'm going to speed it up and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I'm starting out by wetting my entire side. You can see how glossy it is where I wet it. Doing that wet on wet technique. Now with wet watercolor paint, the blue, I'm just filling it in. And I'm going to make it brighter at the, the front, just like I did on the other side by adding more blue. I'm doing the same thing on the top, getting it good and wet for the wet on wet technique. And you'll notice here I put a little bit too much blue back there in the background. So I used a tissue and I did what's called lifting. I lifted some of the paint off of the, the page before it dried. That's another watercolor technique. And again, made it brighter at the top. So there we have that. Now make sure your watercolor is nice and dry. We're going to come back over our lines with our Sharpie. Um, if you need to use the ruler again, you can. And just take your time with it. Make sure you, you try to stay on the lines. Miss Stacy's lines aren't perfectly straight, but I'm going to come back and clean them up in a few minutes. And uh, that'll be all right. You're going to overlap the fish with these lines because remember they're behind the, the wall. So just draw straight over those fish. Go ahead and do your lines in the floor as well. Taking your time to try to keep them straight. And now what I'm doing is these bar, these are actually little metal bars holding the glass together. So as they get closer to the viewer and far from that vanishing point, they're going to be bigger as well. They need to be thicker. So I'm coming in back and thickening them up as they get farther away from that vanishing point. And now I'm going to start coloring in my tiles. I'm starting with the bottom left hand corner and going backwards doing every other one. In. And I like to start from the left to the right so my hand is not um, rubbing on the, the Sharpie and getting it on my hand and maybe smudging up my paper. So just go ahead and fill in all of those with your Sharpie or a black marker. If you don't have one, just use a dark pencil or a black color pencil or whatever you have on hand to do your tiles with. And you'll see now I'm going to go with my pencil and add a little shading around the edge just to give it a little value in the floor. And I'm cleaning up my lines again and making that one a little thicker up here at the front. Then I decided to get a small Sharpie and do my last one back there. Now here we have our finished product. Notice all the lines point to the vanishing point all the diagonal lines. Um, you have things larger as they get farther away from the vanishing point. You have more details as you get farther away from the vanishing point. Things overlap one another. And we also added more vibrant colors as you get farther away from that vanishing point. All of this helps to create the illusion of space on a 2D platform. Use your imaginations add anything you want to with this. Just follow those rules of perspective and have a great time and share this with Miss Stacy when you finish.